Good morning, good morning. Hey, Heartbeat Eva, how are you this morning? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Friday Eve, happy Thursday to you all this morning. Hope you guys received sweet sleep, woke up with bells and whistles on this morning. Hey, Heartbeat Rainy. Hey, Heartbeat Belinda. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hey, Heartbeat Andre. That's right. Happy fantastic Friday Eve. That's right, that's right, that's right. Good. That you're doing great. Hey there, Heartbeat Elaine and Donald, Heartbeat Rodney and Carolyn, Heartbeat Troy, Heartbeat Bernie's. Hey, Heartbeat Shanice. Good morning, good morning, good morning to you all, and welcome to the Gathering of Hearts this morning. I am Regina Banks, your GPS to wholeness, aka the Heart Gatherer. And this morning, your daily dosage is a continuation all this week help me forgive me help me forgive me so this is like what week five on forgiveness something that is uh obviously on god's heart to get us all to get our hearts in line with his wills and with his will and with his way and so we started out this week talking about ways to forgive yourself we started out with number one you are not what you did so disconnect from the mistake from your identity and understand that you are not perfect then we got into journaling your thoughts and demand evidence of it get uh, clear on why you are not forgiving yourself and what you can do to repair it then um, we got to number three was switch your brain and make better choices in the future and today um, number four is become what you believe become what you believe and so yesterday we spent time talking about switching our brain and renewing our minds transforming you know into that perfect pleasing an acceptable thing of God and no longer conforming to the world. When Well, when we begin to switch our brains, when we renew our minds, this is the part now where you should become what you believe. Pastor G, what you talking about? Here's where faith kicks in. We talked about probably in week one and in week two that it takes faith to believe. It takes, it takes faith to even forgive. Remember in the account, you know, one of the disciples, Peter said, God, how many, Jesus, how many times must I forgive? Seven times seven? And he said, no, 70 times seven. He said, well, you're going to have to increase my faith. Why? Because it, at, at that time, it seemed impossible. So it takes faith to forgive. Remember, in this thing of forgiveness, you've got to get your heart and your mind to line up together and then once they line up together stay together you know sometimes the heart will want to do the right thing but the mind will say oh you do remember what they did to you right or or the opposite the mind wants to forgive because the mind knows that that's the right thing to do but the heart is so broken that the heart will refuse to do it remember the bible says this that the heart is wicked is evil who can know it you know so our own hearts can and deceive us look at how long we've thought that we have forgiven someone and we hadn't once we get to digging down in this thing we find that there's some unforgiveness in our hearts you know so like I said the heart is wicked it's deceivable who would know it and so sometimes we don't even know our own hearts because we have convinced ourselves that we have forgiven someone and we find out that we have not so not just someone sometimes we find out that we haven't even forgiven ourselves and so now once you renew your mind once you transform your thinking you've got to become what you believe and so every day we're on here and we say that God wants me whole we started out saying and I'm getting whole by the minute but now it's time to put action not I'm getting whole I am whole so now we're God wants me whole and I am and I am and so now it's time to become what we believe if we believe that we are whole then it's time to become whole so now it's time to put down the broken pieces of our lives it's time to put down those broken thoughts it's time to really become who we say that we are and it takes faith to do that and so now you've got to become what you believe so let's look at um or become here it is this is a better way to say it become who god called you to be become who you are famous for in heaven you know heaven knows you as something else so now become that person so let's look at Mark 27 
And I'm going to read this. What is this? This is the message version. And then I'm going to read it in the Passion Translation. So it says this. It says, as Jesus left the house, it says he was followed by two blind men crying out, mercy, son of David, mercy on us. When Jesus got home, the blind men in went, with, went in with him. Jesus said to them, do you really believe I can do this? Now, how many of us have been in that situation where we want something from God and when we get the opportunity for God to do it, the faith starts to waver a little bit. He says to them, he says, do you really believe that I can do this? Jesus, they said, why, yes, master. He touched their eyes and said, become what you believe. It happened and they saw. And so in this um, fourth stage of um, forgiving yourself and becoming what you believe, this is where the faith kicks in. You've got to believe that God can do what he said he can do. You've got to believe that although I've been broken 30 some years, although I've been carrying this from childhood, that on the day that I make my mind up, that I want to be whole, that I no longer want to be broken in a million pieces, I've got to now believe that God can do it and that when God touches me in that instant that I can be made whole. It says this, it says that they followed him. And so sometimes you've got to cry out, God, Dave, son of David, have mercy on me. Sometimes you've got to get out there and you've really got to do the daggone thing. You've got to put effort. Remember, faith without works is dead. The Passion Translation says it like this. It says, as Jesus left the house, two blind men became Again, following him, shouting over and over, son of David, show us mercy and heal us. You know, I was thinking when I was looking at this last night, I was thinking this, how many times has God called us to do something and we haven't, you know, we, we need to repent because he's given us something. He's, he's made us whole. He's given us an assignment. Okay. I'm getting ready to tell my business here. He's given me this assignment and I begin to complain about it because I didn't feel like doing it. You know, but it's something that God is putting me in a position to do that's going to make me better. But in my flesh, I begin to complain about the thing. And I was speaking with heartbeat Elder Rodney and he, he brought this to my attention. He said, what if God said no? What if God said no to the things that we ask him about? You know, what, what, what if God decided to say no? And then when you think about all the things that God does for you, all of the assignments that God has given you, that these assignments will increase you. I told him, I said, I don't want to talk to you anymore because you're throwing punches left and right. I, I said, I'm going to have to repent when I pray tonight. Who am I to think about being tired, to think about I don't want to do this, and this is an assignment that's going to make me better. This is an assignment from God that he thought enough of me to task me with this. He, 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 look, I need to be doing like these two blind men. Like, I don't want to be like this no more, but I need to be running after God saying, son of David, heal me, heal me from from my own flesh. Heal me from my own thoughts. Heal me from this thing of not wanting to move forward and do this thing. But understand that I've been called to do this thing. That you have touched my life. And this is what you have called me to do. So now I got to become what I believe. I believe that I've been called. I believe that I'm the head of God wants me whole. And that we are getting whole. That we are whole. Then if I believe that, then I got to become that person. And whatever it is that I've got to do to become that person, then that's what I got to do. So heartbeat nation. You believe, believe, become what you believe. Even if it means that you got to chase after God. Even if it means you got to get out in front of people and call his name. Even if it means that you've got to just throw your hands up no matter who's looking at you. You've got to do what God called you to do. It says as Jesus left the house, two blind men began following him, shouting over and over, son of David, show us mercy and heal us. And sometimes that's what we got to do. God heal us from this brokenness. Heal us from ourselves. God touched my life right now. It says, and they followed him right into the house where Jesus asked them, do you believe that I have the power to restore to your, restore sight to your eyes? See, that's what I had to ask last night. He had to ask me last night. Do you believe I had the power? Do you believe that I called you? Do you believe I have the power to heal your sight right now? Because right now what you looking at ain't what's real. You got to see past your nail. You got to jump into faith mode. See past where you are right now. See past that you don't feel like doing it right now, but you got to see where this is going to
going to take you. You got to see where God is calling you. You got to get yourself together and get out your flesh. It then says this. It says they replied. Yes, Lord, we believe. That's what I had to say last night. Yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I know you called me to do this. Yes, Lord, I believe that I'm that woman for the job. It says then Jesus put his hands over their eyes and said, you will have what your faith expects. So God had to remind me last night that when you stay in up here in the supernatural and remember that you are a superhero, remember that you are a supernatural being, stop being in the natural and ma making decisions off of your feelings. Get up here where I called you to be. Stay up here where I called you to be. He says, then you'll have what your faith expects. It might cause you to do a little work. You might have to get out your comfort zone, but when you stay in faith, when you chase after God, they begin to chase after God. It said they followed him. And so in order to see who you really are in this thing, in order to see that you truly are a superhero, in order to become what you believe, you've got to chase Jesus. You've got to follow him. It says they went where he was just because he went on the inside. They going on the inside too. Look, the good news translation says it like this. It says, let it happen. Then just as you believe it, you'll see it. And so heartbeat nation Become what you believe. When you become what you believe, you're able to forgive yourself because you're not that person. Remember when you wrote the list, remember when you had to do the journal to, to make it prove itself. You're not that person. You're not the person that you are angry with. You're not the person that you have resentment against. That's not who you are. But when you renew your mind, when you transform your thinking, when you begin to transform more into to God and not conforming to the world, you're able to become what you believe. And you believe that you are whole. You believe that you are an overcomer. You believe you are one that has a heart that forgives. When you are able to do this, you're able to live in faith the way God would have us to live. See, we're supernatural beings and we're not from here. We operate on faith. Faith is the currency to get things from heaven down here to earth. And when I begin to operate in faith, when I begin to see past my now, not look at what's going on around me, not allow the flesh, not allow my emotions to take over and direct my decisions. When I continue to live in faith and see past my now, see the flesh can't win because I see past my now. I don't see what's going on right now. See, I see past my now. I can't even feel these emotions that are trying to take over my life. Because I see past my now. I'm not right here. I'm way up there with God. Remember when he said that I have gone before you? When I see past my now, I'm up where God is. You know, God doesn't work in the past. That's not who he is. He's always gone before you to prepare this expected end that is good for you. And so when I begin to see past my now, when I begin to become what I believe, I'm never in the present. I'm always ahead because I see past my now. Glory to God. Listen, I know I'm supposed to be preaching and teaching to you all this morning, but I think I just preached myself happy this morning. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So listen, that's the daily doses for today. Become what you believe. Whatever it is that you have been believing God for, whatever it is when you're seeing past your now, that is who you have to become. Become what you believe. That person that once you begin to transform your thinking, you know, that girl or that guy. That's who you are. Become what you believe. That's the daily dosage for today. If you have not subscribed to the YouTube channel already, please do so because there you will find all of your dosages in one place. Follow me on social media platforms. God wants me whole. Visit the website GodWantsMeWhole.org. You know how we do this thing. Come on, let's say it together. Say God wants me whole. Yeah, glory to God. And I am. Hey, listen, have a Back our amazing day. Look out for falling blessings because they are falling all around you. I'm Regina Banks, your GPS, the wholeness, aka the heart gatherer. I love you guys a bunch, and I will see you tomorrow morning right back here at 7:30 a.m. Go out there and become what you believe. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the morning.